So let's do a problem applying the fundamental, fundamental theorem of arithmetic now that we know it. Um, so it's a cute concrete example, and that's uh, zeros in factorials. So the question is, how many zeros are at the end of n factorial? And we'll do three cases. We'll do 10 factorial, which will be a nice warm up because we can do it very explicitly. 100 factorial, which we don't want to calculate out explicitly, but we can understand a lot about it. And 1,000 factorial, which is a really ginormous number. So 10 factorial, not hard to do. It's on your calculator. 362 is 3,628,800. Ends in two zeros. The question is why? How could we have predicted that it would end with two zeros without doing the calculation? Well, by definition, 10 factorial is 10 times 9 times 8, etc., down to 1. Okay. Now, obviously, when we get through a when we multiply by a power by a multiple of 10, we're going to get another zero. Um, but that would only explain one of the zeros. Well, but of course, what's another way to get 10? One of the key things here is that 10 is not a prime number itself. 10 is 5 times 2. So this 5 has the potential to create a 0 if there's all if it's already even. And of course, by that time, I've already multiplied the 2 and the 4 in, and so we've got plenty of factors of 2. And so this 5 is going to create a factor of 10. So that's why we're going to get two zeros really have two factors of 10. All right, now we're not going to get anything else, any other zeros, as we go through 11, 12, 13, 14. But now when we get to 15, notice... Again, there's plenty of factors of 2. We've got a 2 from the 14. We've got a two twos from the 12. We've got a lot of leftover 2s from the 10 factorial. So this 15 has plenty of 2s to back it up to pair with, and we're going to create another 0. So that's going to have, um, I claim that's going to have three zeros. And somehow I'm on caps lock. I'm not sure why. OK. So let's take it out a little bit further, because there's one extra complication. You might be guessing, oh, exactly every time you hit a, a multiple of 5, you're just going to add one more 0. Well, so 15 factorial here, that's just a shorthand for 15 all the way down to 1, is going to have three zeros. 16 and 17 and 18 and 19 don't add any zeros, but they add up to our stock of powers of 2 which is great, so we really never have to worry about running out of powers of 2. Then 20, of course, is going to give us another 0, and it gives us an extra 2, by the way, because it's 4 times 5. Um, 21, 22, 23, 24. Now 25, though, that is 5 squared. So that's going to give us 2 powers of 5 and plenty of other 2s, and so that's going to add two zeros at once. So this had 3, this added one more, this adds two more. That's actually going to have six zeros, which might be one more than you would have imagined. OK, so now we think we see the pattern. So if we go up to 100, OK, we're going to find how many zeros in 100 factorial. OK, so let's just count how many multiples. Ooh, um, I don't think I need this in math mode, actually. Um, we're going to count how many multiples of 5, this is something you should probably pause the video at this point. Maybe you should just do the whole thing, do the rest of the thing, and then see if you agree with the rest of the video. So pause it. Um, how many multiples of 5? Well, we've got 5, 10, 15, all the way up to 100. Conveniently enough, 100 is itself a multiple of 5, so it kind of matches in nice and evenly. There's exactly 20 of those numbers because it's groups of 5, and I, I'm always um, ending with a, a multiple of 5. So there's going to be 20 multiples of 5. Now, notice that that's including 25 and 50 and 75 and 100, which are multiples of 25. So I've included one of the factors of 5 that come from those things, but I haven't included the extras. Okay, So there's four multiples of 25, namely 25, 50, 75, 100. They have 5 squared hiding in them. I've already counted one of them. Um, but I'm, I need to count those four extras. So we get four extra um, factors of five. So total, we're getting um, 24. Okay. So I claim 100 factorial ends with 24 zeros. Okay. I think my computer will actually calculate that. Woo! Um, yeah, and if you look, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 groups of 0. Woo. Okay, that's a big number. Okay, so now, what about 1,000 factorial? Okay, same idea. 
So we've got um, 5, 10, 15, 20, up to 1,000. And I'm just paying attention to the fact that those are multiples of 5, I'm not worrying about any extras quite yet. But there's going to be 1,000 over 5, which is 200. I'm going to put a colon in here. 200 multiples of 5. OK. Now I'm going to get extra from all the multiples of 25. From each of those, I'm going to get one extra. Um, now I know that like 125 is going to give me any, something on top of that. But let's wait. Let's just count. the. Just think about, OK, these are the ones that are um, multiples of 25. Well, again, 1,000, conveniently enough, is a multiple of 25. And so there's just 1,000 over 25 of 440 multiples of 25. Okay. So that's going to be 40 extras, 40 extra uh, factors of 5. Because for each one, I, I took into account already the fact that it was a, uh, a multiple of 5, but I didn't can't take into account the extra. Now there's some more special ones. That 125 is 5 cubed, 250. 375, I could almost write these out, but there's no point. Pattern's still pretty clear. Up to 1,000, which is a multiple of 125. Okay. And so there's 1,000 over 125, or 8 multiples of 125. So 8 extras. And then, is there any more? Oh, yes, 625. Just one multiple of that's 5 to the 4th. OK, so one last extra. OK, so these were all added on top. And so total, we're getting 240, 249 factors of 5. And of course, remember, we weren't asked about factors of 5 so much. We really asked about factors of 10. But it's pretty clear that um, there's far more multiples of 2 than there are multiples of 5. And there's far more multiples of 4 than there are of 25, and of 8, and there's just a, an abundance of factors of 2. So we never have to worry about a 5 not being paired with a 2. And so we're going to get, um, hence, factors of 10, hence, zeros. And I think my computer would actually display 1,000 factorial, but I don't want to count 249 um, factors in front of you. That would be boring for everybody. But check it like in Wolfram Alpha if you want. Okay, so notice, how did we use the fundamental theorem of algebra here? This whole idea that everything can be broken down into pieces and then rearranged and just count the prime factors, that's totally the, prime, the fundamental theorem of algebra. Um, and the fact that to count factors of 10, it's exactly the same as counting factors of 5 and 2. All of that is really um, using FTA. Cool.